Pivot tables enable you to explore large amounts of data easily. In this video, I'd like to show you how to create and work with the Pivot Table tool inside Windows Excel. These instructions are tailored for Excel 2007 or newer, but the basics should apply even to earlier versions of Excel. First, start Excel and open the data set that you'd like to explore. I'll assume that your data is arranged with the variables as, as columns, and that your data also includes column headings. In this video, I'll be working with the data set involving home sales. Each row in this data set represents a single home, and each column gives a characteristic of that home. For example, the price of the home, the number of bedrooms, etc. Note that this data set is fairly large, containing over 2,700 rows. The pivot table will be a nice tool for getting a handle on this amount of data. When you're ready, select the rectangular array of cells around the entire data set and click on the Insert tab and choose Pivot Table. In the next dialog box, you'll notice that Excel has already referenced the data that you selected. You can change several options here, but clicking OK is a good default. You'll then be presented with a blank pivot table. In the list of variables on the right, click and drag the main variable that you'd like to measure into the Values section. In this case, I'd like to examine price. You'll see on the left that an initial pivot table has been automatically created. At the moment, it simply tells us the sum of all price data in the spreadsheet. Our first modification is to make sure the pivot table is showing the average price. So click on the value field in the bottom right and choose value field settings. Then ensure that average is chosen. While in this dialog box, I'll also choose the number format to match the data. When ready, click OK. Our second change is to examine the average price by city. So click and drag the corresponding column heading into the rows section. The pivot table updates to show not only the overall average price, but also the average price by city. Here we can see which city has the highest or the lowest average price, for example. Our last change is to also examine the average price by, by age. Here, click and drag the corresponding column heading into the Columns section. Again, the pivot table updates, but you can see that because there are so many different age values, the table has become quite large. To make the pivot table more manageable, we need to group the columns into several integrals, or bins, as a means of aggregating the data. Make sure you have selected one of the cells in the column data. Then, on the Analyze tab, choose Group Selection. In the next dialog box, you can select the starting value of the first bin, the ending value of the last bin, and the width of each bin. You can play around with these numbers to set them however you like. When ready, click OK. The pivot table should then update with the specified bins. We now have a pivot table that examines average price by city and by age. We also see the so-called grand totals at the edges of the tables. Overall, this gives us a nice breakdown of how average price behaves based on changing the city and changing the age. An optional extra step is to choose the Analyze tab and then Pivot Chart. Then choose a basic column chart and click OK. Excel will then prepare the chart that goes along with the table. This can be used to help visualize the information in the pivot table. Overall, you should feel free to experiment with pivot tables. You may have to examine your data in many different ways before you find the exact answer to the question you care about. Pivot tables can always be deconstructed by just clicking and dragging column headings out of the various pivot table sections. 